Chapter 33, Loose Ends, Detective Fisk said they had the two suspects in custody. Those bastards had left behind a mountain of evidence at the scene and were easily connected to the crime. In the LA Times police blotter, Detective Fisk called Susie's murder horrific, saying, it was a very vicious murder, very brutal. She was not a threat to anyone. When the first hearing came for the two men who had killed Susie, I went. I saw them, both young, with their heads hanging low and their mother crying behind them. Her weeping for her sons, begging for their lives after they had viciously killed Susie, pissed me off so bad, I didn't want to go back to another hearing. I wanted to say to her, how do you raise not just one but two assholes? How did you raise two kids so sick they would do this to a person? Despite all that had happened to me and Susie, we never went to a dark side. There was no excuse for that type of evil. I stormed out of the courtroom and never went back, Lori supported me through what had happened to Susie and helped me put my past in perspective. She was the first person to point out to me that I would leave myself out when talking about the past. She pointed out how I could recount the details, but not the emotion, not the feeling. I could only tell the story as if it were happening to somebody other than me. When I would start to talk about my childhood and call myself Tommy, she would stop me and remind me it happened to me. After Susie's death, I found I could best relieve my grief when I was with Lori or fishing. For years. I'd been going with Len fishing to Mexico several times a year, and Cabo San Lucas was easily my favorite place. Lori took us to the airport, and picked us up. I then told Lori I wanted her to come with me to Cabo. I wanted her to see the Cabo I saw, where it felt like the first home since Woodmont that I loved. This would tell me if she was the one for me. May 1993 we made our first trip together. We flew in and had a rough ride to our hotel. The roads were all sand. There was no real marina then. So we had to climb down rocks to get to the boat. Lori was a good sport about it, trying to keep the mood up as strangers helped lower her from the rocks down to the boat. She reminded me I was about to take her on her first ever boat ride. That day the waters were turquoise and many shades of blue and the sun sparkled like diamonds on the water. We came into a school of yellowfin tuna and Lori was doing good reeling them in until she started to get nauseous. She would smile at me and say what a good time she was having. Then run to the side of the boat to throw up. I couldn't help but love her, as she kept trying to make the best of it. In the middle of her heaving over the side of the boat, I said, I love you, Lori. Will you marry me? Lori didn't fall in love with Cabo like I did, but her being a good sport was enough. I knew then we had something special, four years later came a real proposal followed by marriage. We were married in a civil service ceremony in Las Vegas. We put a down payment on a house the very same day and started our life together in Vegas. Mother still sent me letters and tapes periodically. I called her at holidays and every time a big event happened in my life. I sent her flowers regularly, ordered from and delivered personally by my childhood friend Wally Heppenstall, who owned Trillium Flowers in Goldwine, I knew I had to call and tell her I had married Lori. I wasn't sure how she would take it. Lori was sure she would be happy for me and picked up the other line so she could listen in. I was quickly patched through to mother when I called and she started in talking about the movement. And what was happening in Philadelphia. As soon as she gave me a chance I jumped in with my news. Mother, I am married, and I want to come and see you. I know you will like her. After a pause she replied, I don't approve, Tommy. You can't have a wife. But I chose her, just like father chose you, I said. I knew she had proposed to father, but she liked to think she was a chosen one, no, Tommy. It's not the same. You are not allowed to have a wife, and you cannot bring her here. After then, every time I tried to talk to mother about Lori or Susie, she would change the subject. I wasn't angry outright, but resentment was starting to form in me. I started to think that she didn't care at all about what happened to me. She couldn't even be bothered to send flowers after Susie died, though she sat in front of beautiful flowers day and night. 
she couldn't spare a single bloom for the rosebud who had dedicated her life to her.